Welcome back. We back at it. Glad to have you back in chemistry class. Glad to have you guys back in chemistry class. So today, this will be a little bit of chemistry and biology, and that equates to biochemistry. So we're going to talk about a little bit of biochemistry evolving around cancer. I'm not going to go too deep. I'm going to keep it very, very uh, mainstream for everyone So because I want you guys to understand the information. I don't want to over talk or um, do a little bit too much when it comes to science. So just make sure that everyone is comprehending what I'm saying. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand during class, which means that you can go ahead and drop the question in the comment box so that everyone can see and that I can respond to you on a platform where everyone can view it and they can have that information as well. So today, let's get started. So what is happening in January of 2021? I've started something that I am trying to keep up. So on Monday, which will be Mad Sciences Monday, I will drop some gems or some science busters, some science seeking knowledge, and then which will basically shatter your whole world of what you thought. I'll break it down to you a little bit, give you like a little synopsis, but I'll do a continuation on Wednesday in chemistry class. So whatever I discuss on Monday will lead into the topic of discussion or the lecture for Wednesday's chemistry class, okay? So Mad Science Monday, we talked about cancer, genetic versus inherited. And I got a little subtitle, do I get it from my mama? That ain't how I really say mama, I say mother. Do I get it from my mother? But for everyone else out there, we're going to go ahead and use that vernacular. My mama. Do I get it from my mama? That don't even sound right. Do you get it from your mother? Do you get it from your mother? Do you get it from your father? That's my little DC twain. So let's proceed, shall we? Let's get busy. So the deadliest cancers. I know everyone knows someone with cancer, knows someone that may have passive cancer, God rest their soul, or know someone actively living with cancer. So the we're gonna rank them from number one to five as far as the deadliest cancers, and we're talking about the United States of America. We have number one, lung cancer. Uh, my grandfather passed a lung cancer when I was 14 years old. We have, oh, did I, can, can y'all see who back there in the building? Professor Health is in the building. Asha the Alchemist, that's my, um, ego my alter ego but she is her and i she is her and i am her she is me okay so getting back number one lung cancer grandfather passed of lung cancer when i was 14 years old number two colon cancer colon cancer i do actively know someone who has colon cancer number three breast cancer i know everyone has been probably been touched by this my aunt had breast cancer god bless her so she no longer has cancer. Shout out to you, Auntie. What's up, Sput? Um, if you're watching this, if you're not, you need to be tuning in because I just gave you a heavy shout out. Number four, pancreatic cancer. I don't know anyone dealing with pancreatic cancer that I know of, but I do remember the congressman. I think it's Elijah. I forget his last name. Cummings. Elijah Cummings. I believe he passed away from pancreatic cancer. I think that was last year. So that's the only example I can point to. Prostate cancer. I do not know someone that's passed or actively dealing with prostate cancer, had any complications with prostate cancer. However, that is number five on the list. So cancer, let's let's talk about it. Is it preventable? Um, is there a cure? Is there any type of healing regimen? Is there treatment? Yes. Let's get into it and let's do it. So like I said, Mad Science is Monday. I dropped some gems. I dropped some knowledge. Mad Science is Monday. Genetic refers to the change or alteration or mutation that occurs with the tumor. So I was asking you, well, I put out their question to my followers. And I'm like, cancer is genetic parentheses as it runs in my family. And I said false. I said that's incorrect. That is false. Yes. Why? So cancer is genetic, but not in the sense that you thought it was. That's why I put in parentheses doesn't run in my family, right? 
The correct term you're looking for is inherited. So that's why the title is genetic versus inherited. Inherited is the risk that you're going to inherit from both parents. And what Western uh, medicine would tell us, or science would tell us, is that 5 to 10% of cancers are inherited. Okay? Meaning that you develop the risk to manifest or develop cancer, right? Doesn't necessarily mean that people who have that inherited germline or hereditary mutation, because that's how it occurs, is that, well, that's how science tells us that occurs. That's how Western science or Western medicine tells us that how it occurs. Inherited cancer occurs via a germline mutation or hereditary mutation. That's what they say. I'm just, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just here to tell you what they're saying. And that's at a 5 to 10% rate. Does it mean that the person who has this and had a hereditary mutation or germline mutation or familial cancer or hereditary or inherited cancer trait means that they are going to develop cancer? It doesn't mean that. Now, what they will tell you is that you have a higher percentage of developing cancer if you have a familial cancer or inherited cancer. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get cancer, okay? But we're going to break that down a little bit more in the discussion later on in the lecture. So does it run in your family? No. Do does, Did your grandmother have it? Did your grandfather have it? Did your mother have it? Did your father have it? Your sister, your aunties, your cousins, your nephews? Possibly so. Doesn't mean it necessarily runs in your family. That means that your mother, your sister, your aunt, your nephew, your cousins, whoever has it. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's, that's a familiar cancer that came from pass down from one generation to the next. That's not what that means. In science, when they refer to genetic, they're referring to a genetic alteration is what it's called that's going to occur um, at the tumor level, okay? And like I said before, inheritance refers to the risk you have from both of your parents. Inherited takeaway message. What they tell us as far as uh, U.S. medicine and science science is that five to ten percent is inherited. That's what they say. Does it run in your family? No. What does run in your family is the behavior that develops cancer. That's what runs in your family. And this is something that Dr. Savy speaks a lot about. That I've taken taken out of his book as well, and what I've learned from over my course of education and logical uh, logical thinking is that it's not that the cancer runs in your family it's the behaviors that you that you've seen one generation or the next generation of people in your family do those behaviors are very similar if not the same those are the things you need to focus on that cause cancer so for instance if you're saying oh what kind of behaviors professor health what kind of behaviors are you talking about um, cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption, what you eat, what you are exposed to environmentally, those are those are behaviors or lifestyles that can ultimately uh, begin the manifestation of cancer. Those types of things that can run in your family, like um, if my grandfather who smoked um, cigarettes, my mother smoked cigarettes as well uh, when I was younger. And if my grandfather had lung cancer and then my mother says, well, I have also developed lung cancer, well, it runs in my family. No, the actual behavior of smoking cigarettes that cause cancer is the behavior that runs in your family. Hope you get that. Hope I'm not confusing you guys out there, but I know you guys are smart enough to understand that, okay? Like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop that below. And let me turn on this light so you guys can see me a little bit better. Yes. Yes, good. Okay, so please excuse me. I had some technical difficulties over here, but um, we're back. So genetic changes and mutations occur in the tumor and are not passed on to children. This is what I said in my post on Instagram on Mad Sciences Monday, that when someone says, oh, it's genetic, they are saying, I get it from someone in my family. That's what they mean. That's what they're trying to, they're trying to say. What I'm saying to you is that that is false. It is genetic, but not in that sense. It's genetic 
referring to the genetic alteration that occurs on tumor. Okay, so stick with me. Tumor initiation is the result of genetic alteration. Well, Professor Health, what is genetic alteration? This can occur via change in lifestyle and environmental exposure. I discussed a few things as far as lifestyle on previous slides with you before, such as cigarette smoking. That's one lifestyle change that can occur uh, in genetic alteration, which can re result in genetic alteration. Like right here, right here, we have cigarette smoking, diet, diet or eating behavior, exposure to carcinogens, estrogen, drinking alcohol. So a few uh, cancers that I'm just going to go ahead and throw out there from the, um, excuse me, the genetic alterations that, that are resulting to cigarette smoking. So cigarette smoking is associated with what type of cancer? Lung cancer. Dieting, eating, or behavior is associated with a whole slew of cancers, not one to be specific. Exposure to carcinogens, again, can be a slew of cancers, not to be specific. Estrogen, excuse me, estrogen is associated with one in particular, uh, breast cancer, uh, as, as well as dairy products, but I digress. And drinking alcohol is associated with liver cancer. So there's a slew of cancers, and there are some that I just pointed out to you guys that I know you are very well aware of, and they can all be a manifestation of cancer based upon the genetic alteration. That occurs via lifestyle or environmental exposure. They say it randomly, but I, I do not agree with that. I don't think that it randomly occurs. You feed cancer cells, so you feed cancer. So I don't think you randomly just get cancer. You know, there's something that occurs in order for you to get it. Okay. So the tumor, also known as the neoplasm, is a result of swelling. Right, we all know what swelling is, or better known as inflammation from abnormal growth of cells. Dr. Sabi teaches us that all diseases are a result of inflammation. We just need to understand where it's localized at. Where did it begin? Where is it happening at? Or where is it spreading to? So when you figure out where it's localized to, like what organ are we discussing? Are we talking about the breast? Are we talking about the liver? Are we talking about the, the pancreas? Are we talking about the colon? So we all have potential to have cancerous cells, right? So anyone can develop cancer. It, so, but what does it depend on? It depends on those genetic alter, alterations. It depends on your lifestyle. It depends upon what you're exposed to. Again, I say that cancer is fed. You feed it. If you don't want to feed it, you inhibit it. So you inhibit the things that cause it, okay? So, who's at risk? What occupation are at risk for uh, carcinogens, being exposed to carcinogens? One of the top carcinogens that I'm going to talk about that's listed right here is benzene. Six carbon, six hydrogens, benzene. Top 20 chemicals produced in the United States. One of the top 20 chemicals produced in the United States, benzene. Where can you find benzene at? We've talked about this before in chemistry class, so I know you guys know it, but we're going to go ahead and hit that repeat button, that replay. Plastics, pesticides, gasoline, paint, dyes, furniture, wax. So who's at risk? Painters, people who work at gas station, gas station workers, furniture finishers. Who else? People who work on railroads, buses, you drive railroads, you drive a bus, truckers, miners, pesticide sprayers, or landscapers, or groundskeepers. I've also talked about this before. Give me a little second. I'm drinking some mullein tea for my respiratory system. So, Dwayne Johnson, a groundskeeper, sued Monsanto, as we know, as the big pesticide brand, right? Now um, owned by Bayer. Sued for $78 million. Well, he sued for more, but he was awarded $78 million award because him using the Roundup that Roundup pesticide created by Monsanto, he was that resulted in him getting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a type of cancer. So he sued this company. He won. He was awarded seventy-eight million dollars. So that occupation that he was doing, which was a groundskeeper, he was a pest, he, not pest control, pesticide control. Um, he 
sued and he won because him being exposed to that level of carcinogen, he was at risk and he developed um, non Hodgkin's lymphoma. So there are, um, this, this is why I talk about environmental exposure. So environmental exposures, it very well exists where a person can develop um, cancer, okay? So what accelerates tumor growth? You know I was ready for this question class, y'all, because I know y'all was like, okay, so, okay, where, you know, what do I eat? Y'all always want to, what do I eat? What do I don't eat? Okay, let's get to it, and let's do it. What accelerates tumor growth? Sugar. Sugar feeds cancer. Table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, excuse me, processed meat via smoking, curing, salting, or adding any additional preservatives, such as, well, what is, what is that? such as, excuse me, jerky, bacon, bologna, bologna. Your bologna does have several names. A few of them are oink, oink, or death. But I can't even hold you that I used to really, when I was a kid, eat fried bologna sandwiches, and I would cut the little slit. My mother would do the little slit down the middle so that it could bubble up and cook really good on both sides. And yes, I used to tear it up, but that was when I didn't know no better. Now that I know better, you won't catch me eating no bologna or bologna. Oink, oink. Hot dogs. What parent doesn't feed their child these processed foods? Hot dogs. You go to gang, you go to hot dogs, you go to carnival, you make hot dogs, corn dogs. What I mean, you go to uh, parties, kid parties, but they serving you hot dogs, hamburgers, lunch meat. Every kid I know around the way used to eat Lunchables. I used to smash them. I used to eat Lunchables. That lunch meat, come on now, no. Lunch meat, sausages, all of those types of processed meats are just not good, okay? They accelerate tumor growth. Refined carbs such as white rice, uh, white bread, white flour, pasta, cereals, dairy products. Dairy products is like a no to the go, no go. Soy-based products. What are soy-based products? Some people don't know what are soy-based products outside of soy sauce. Uh, tofu, tempa, edamame, edamame, anyone? No, those soybeans that look like uh, peas. Okay, come in a little pot, soy base. Alcohol, red meat, red meat accelerates tumor growth. So you like a good sirloin, you like a good little New York strip, you might want to um, think about that, second guess, okay? Uh, fried or broiled meats. I have this asterisk because I'm talking about fried and broiled meats, and I'll talk about something else in a little bit as well. So, cooking foods at, at such high temperatures, meats in particular, at such high temperatures can be very carcinogenic, okay? And I said meats for a reason, because the mixture of the amino acids that are inside the meat with a high temperature can cause the food to be carcinogenic. Now, if you fry other foods, your your worry is now your oil consumption, which is a fat a fatty acid. So you're worried about that, right? But not so much very very uh, stark difference when I'm talking about frying and broiling meats to frying like mushrooms. Not saying that frying method is the healthiest method, but there's a total difference between frying or broiling meats into doing that with uh, vegetables. I already talked about red meat. So let's talk about a little bit of some little inside scoops. Tumor proliferation is supplied with nutrients to, and these nutrients come from the foods we eat. So you are supplying the cancer growth tumor proliferation for the for those cells those cancer cells to multiply by which you feed it so that's what i'm talking about what accelerates tumor growth which my father always told me and still to this day tells me you are what you eat so if you're eating carcinogens or foods that cause cancer or cause tumor growth what are you you're cancerous point blank period. So you don't want to be cancerous. You don't want to feed tumor growth. You don't want to proliferate, help proliferate uh, cancer cells. Then you watch what you eat the be to the best of your ability, to the best of your ability, to the best of your ability that you can. And the other asterisk that I want to talk about when I talk about fried foods 
outside of the meats. This vegetable in particular, starch foods such as potatoes, like fried potatoes, like potato chips or french fries, when fried, they form a byproduct and or a chemical known as acrylamide. Okay, acrylamide is a carcinogen. It causes cancer. So if you've ever seen What the Health, and they talked about how carcinogens are supposed to be labeled, but you weren't seeing these labels on like french fries or potato chips, they're misleading you to think that this food is healthy when it actually is a carcinogen. It can cause cancer. And when not fried, I'm not saying it's healthy to consume potatoes, whether that you fry them or whether you don't fry them. Outside of frying them, I'm saying that they are acidic. And what do I mean by acidic? I mean that they are hybridized. They, they are hybridized food. The original potato, as Dr. Sebi teaches us and what research teaches us, is that the original potato comes from the red rose. And it's been so hybridized that now you have the uh, potato, you have the sweet potato, you have all these other variations, but they are not um, closest to the parent, which is the red rose. So I'm telling you that you, you make your own, you make your own choices, you make your own decisions, but I'm just here to educate you. Starchy foods such as potato chips and french fries, especially when fried, form a carcinogenic chemical called acrylamide. And if you're not frying them, you don't eat them because they're highly acidic and, high, and a hybridized vegetable. So, uh, and what inhibits the growth of cancer cells? What can I do to stop the growth of cancer cells? What can I do to reverse this process? Or what can I do to prevent um, cancer? Because it is preventable, it is curable, or I would say healable. It is, you can be treated from it. So I wanna read you guys a couple of excerpts from one of my nutrition textbooks and tell me what you guys think or let's just share this with you so bear with me cancer vegetarians have a significantly lower rate of cancer than the general population their low cancer rates may be due to their high intakes of fruits and vegetables in fact the ratio of vegetables to meat may may be the most relevant dietary factor responsible for cancer prevention I'll go ahead and repeat that one more time. In fact, the ratio of vegetables to meat may be the most relevant dietary factor responsible for cancer prevention. Some scientific findings indicate that vegetarian diets are associated not only with lower cancer mortality in general, but also with lower incidence, meaning new cases of cancer at specific sites. Specific sites talking about the organs like uh, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, most notably colon cancer. People with colon cancer seem to eat more meat, saturated fat, and fewer vegetables than do people without colon cancer. High protein, high fat, low fiber diets creates an environment in the colon that promote the development of cancer in some people. A high meat diet has been associated with cancers of the esophagus, stomach, lungs, and liver, as well as an increased mortality. So while, bear with me while I digress for a little bit because it, it talked about high, high fat, high protein, low fiber diets. And when I read that, I immediately, and this book, mind you, is very, very old. So that's why it's talking about vegetarians and not you talking about vegans either. So when I read that high protein, high fiber, high protein, excuse me, high fat, low fiber diet, I immediately thought of the keto diet or ketogenic diet. And I'm not making this up. That's just what the scientific findings have said, right? And not only scientific findings, logical scientific thinking will tell you that that's not really a a, a healthy diet to consume but um, or partake in. I'm just here to give you the news. Don't shoot the messenger. So a high meat diet has been associated with cancers of the esophagus, stomach, lungs, and liver, as well as an increased mortality. 
Don't forget that it's also associated with colon cancer, colon or the rectum. So, I got another excerpt that I wanted to read to you guys. There are three specific cancers on this table that I'm going to read to you guys. It's called Factors Associated with Cancer at Specific Sites, meaning we're talking about the organs, right? Three of those, esophagus, cancer, cancer of the mouth, the pharynx, and the larynx, or cancer of the stomach, protective factors mention not eating non-starchy vegetables, eating fruits, eating fruits, and eating other vegetables. That's what this table says. So as we just discussed, a starchy vegetable was what? Potatoes. Those three specific cancers say a protective factor is to not consume starchy vegetables, but to eat non-starchy vegetables and fruits, amongst other things. But those are particularly the prominent ones you want to be focused on, fruits and vegetables. That's why we have here located on the right side, our little tidbit, fruits and vegetables. So those were excerpts that I wanted to read you guys. So plant-based diet, particularly alkaline diet, is very, very uh, protective when we come about when we talk about eliminating or preventing the manifestation of cancer and best in eliminating acidic foods. Why? Acidic foods cause inflammation. Acidic foods cause inflammation. Okay? And the highest level of antioxidant foods that you can get to fight off or help with free radical formation to remove that from the body or helps to ward that off is going to be foods such as berries, citrus fruit, kale, walnuts. There are others to list, but I want to just go ahead and give you a little snippet because we talked about this before in chemistry class, foods that are high in antioxidants. Like your berries, you want to make sure you're getting your, I love berries, strawberries, raspberries, I eat goji berries. Want to make sure you're getting those blueberries, blackberries. The blackest berries, we just. So antioxidants, fruit, vegetables, that's a takeaway message. Also, if there was something that I was going to point to, if there was a herb I was going to point to where I said, you know what? You, all, you need to be watching your food, your dietary intake, what you're exposed to environmentally, making sure you're eating your antioxidants, your fruits and your vegetables that are mostly, um, for the most part, alkaline, right? What herb would I point to? What herb would a true herbalist point to and tell you this is what you also should be consuming or supplementing? Soursop. Why soursop? Soursop leaves. Why soursop leaves? I'm not making this up. This has been published by NIH as well as FDA is saying this as well, right? For all our old schools, all our people in Caribbean countries, they know this. They know this because they have soursop growing in the back of their houses. They have soursop at, at the tips of their hands. They can get it. Soursop leaves are 10,000 times stronger than chemotherapy. So if this, you have to ask yourself, if this information has been published by NIH, and said to and been said by FDA that soursop leaves are 10,000 times stronger than chemotherapy. Tell me why in the US medical industry that it is a felony for a physician to prescribe you a treatment or any type of healing modality outside of chemotherapy and radiation. If they know this information, you tell me. You know what I think. You tell me. You tell me why they're not telling people out there that soursop leaves are 10,000 times stronger than chemotherapy. Why are they telling you the only way you can rid cancer from your body is to go under radiation, to go under chemotherapy? That is not targeted specifically for cancer cells. So that means it's going to kill your cells. It's not targeted specifically for cancer cells, so it's going to kill your healthy cells. And people wonder why your immune system breaks down, why people who are on these types of treatments are weak, they're more prone to get sick. This is why. So the herb you need to keep in mind, or, 
what you need to keep in mind, the natural modality, Sarasa leaves. If you've never heard of it, here you go right here. I keep me some Sarasa leaves. I used to sell this on my website as well. Sarasa leaves. Any, you can find soursop, fresh soursop, and even the leaf in any Caribbean country you, you go to. Jamaica especially. Grenada. These come from Grenada. Also, so you, you can find them in your, uh, your um, Asian markets. You may be able to find um, soursop leaf. Like this brand right here. I find this in one of the, not Asian markets. It's a Caribbean market. I'm sorry. In the Caribbean market. Soursop leaf. Very uh, similar but bigger than a bay leaf, right? Kind of looks like a bay leaf. This is a soursop leaf. And you can boil this in tea and use this and drink this. I said to drink at least twice, twice a, I mean three times a day, excuse me. So cancer is preventable. I'll do that later. Don't want to do all that. Open your ear. So cancer is preventable. Cancer can be treated. Cancer, can, you can heal from cancer. Okay, so don't ever think your life is over because you have somehow developed cancer. There's life for you after cancer. There's life for you doing cancer. You just got to be sure to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and making sure that you're putting into your body what inhibits uh, the growth of cancer tumor cells and not what uh, manifests the growth or proliferation of tumor cancer cells. There's another excerpt I want to read you guys. So just in case you're wondering, oh my God, what can I eat? Because Brittany, a prof professor of health, is always telling us what we can't eat. What I tell y'all what y'all can eat too. Y'all just don't want to make those choices. However, um, I'll break that down like a pound once again. So recommendations for reducing cancer. Physical activity. You want to make sure you're physically active at least 15 to 30 minutes a day. Whatever that may be for you, if that's walking upstairs, if that's cutting the grass, some level of physical activity. It doesn't necessarily have to be going to the gym, but you want to be doing something. Get that body moving. Get that heart rate up, okay? Excuse me. So physical activity. You do not want to be sedentary. You do not want to be a person that's always just sitting around, wasting time, doing absolutely nothing. Don't want to do that. Because when you become sedentary you can become obese or overweight. And that is a risk factor as well as for other chronic diseases and for cancer. What you eat, what you consume, what you drink. Are you drinking alcohol? Are you drinking sugary drinks like soda? Or are you drinking a lot of water? Are you drinking 100% fruit juice with no, um, no additives, no preservatives? Are you drinking that? Because that also is an option if you want to stop drinking uh, sodas. If you want to cut back on the alcohol, replace that with more water. If you do not like water, which some people hate the taste of water for some reason, um, probably because your palate is very acidic, you want to go ahead and put some fruits in, in your um, water so that you can it can be more tasteful for you, okay? What else? Eliminating red meat, processed meats, or decreasing as much as you can animal meats, period. Decreasing that. You want to be consuming more fruits and vegetables and lots and lots of water, especially foods that are high in antioxidants. And guess what's high in antioxidants that I forgot to mention to you guys? Soursop leaves. So you want to get some antioxidants in your body? Get you some soursop leaves. Drink you some soursop tea. So I mentioned the... Uh, the body weight as far as obesity being overweight, that is a risk factor. So like I said, want to make sure that you're eating and consuming and drinking foods that are foods and drinks that are beneficial for healthy body weight. OK, physical activity, staying active, supplementation, sour soft leaf can be a supplementation. Those foods you're eating, we talked about those things before. But you want to be more on the alkaline side as much as you can. I know it's very, very hard, but try introducing more alkaline foods. If you have any questions or comments about alkaline foods, I eat specifically from the Dr. Sabi Nutritional Guide. If you want to know where you can get it, I have it. You can get it from me. Also, I would not tell you to Google it because there's so many different variations out there. You want this one specific one. Drop me um, some comments down here. Put your email address out there. DM me however you would like to do it. And let's get to it. So 
Today you learned about genetic versus inherited cancer. You learned that cancer can be prevented. You learned that all disease is a manifestation of inflammation. How do we rid inflammation from the body? Um, more, the more alkaline, the better. So you want to get rid of acidic foods. Why? Because acidic foods cause inflammation. Inflammation causes disease. We want to be disease free in the 2021 and ongoing. So I love to say that I love you guys. Glad to have your ass in chemistry class. Please do be back. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that the month of January is for cervical cancer awareness. This is why I did the chemistry class in Mad Sciences Monday revolving around cancer. I didn't want to do specific cancers because there are so many or slew. And basically, the one thing or message you need to know to take away is that it can be prevented and how you can pre prevent cancer, whether it be at whatever organ or whatever specific site, it can be prevented. So, with that being said, I will see you next week for another lecture and chemistry class. And make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. And I love you guys.